The story that will be told in this video is one of the most mysterious in this genre. The deceased could not be identified for a long 40 years after her death. This is despite the fact that her clothing was very distinctive and she was found in a small town where everyone knows each other. This is the case of the brutal murder and very long identification of the legendary Princess Doe. Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to click the bell to get notifications about new videos. Blairstown, Warren County, New Jersey, July 15, 1982. Gravedigger George Kaiser came to the local Cedar Ridge Cemetery and discovered a body in a remote area near a small forest. Lieutenant Eric Kranz was the first to arrive at the scene of the discovered body. The man saw the body of a young white woman dressed in a rather unusual attire for their area. Further examination by coroners revealed that the person died as a result of multiple blunt force trauma to the head. The face was so disfigured that it was very difficult to imagine how the deceased looked like during life. The age of the victim was determined to be between 14 and 18 years old. Height was about 5 feet and 2 inches, and she weighed about 103 pounds. She had shoulder-length chestnut hair and blue eyeshadow applied to her eyelids. Her left ear was pierced twice, while it was impossible to determine the state of the right ear due to decomposition. The girl had red nail polish on the nails of her right hand. The deceased was wearing a red short-sleeved blouse with a triangular neckline, a yellow trim on the shoulders, and black and blue trim along the neckline, sleeves, and waist. She also had a red, white, and blue patchwork skirt with a printed pattern of stylized peacocks along the hem. The killer did not take her jewelry. A 14-karat gold chain with small white beads and a patterned cross remained on the victim. Her shoes and underwear were missing, leading to the assumption of sexual assault. However, coroners could not definitively answer this question, as the body had decomposed quite extensively. They estimated that it had been at the cemetery from a few days to a few weeks, and the hot summer weather had accelerated natural processes. There were no special distinctive features in the appearance of the girl. The only thing noted was that her two front teeth were slightly darker than the others. Specialists also determined that the girl had never given birth and had never been pregnant. The toxicology report did not reveal any presence of psychoactive substances in the victim's body, but due to the state of the body, the result may have been inaccurate. In an attempt to establish the identity of the victim, detectives began questioning local residents. In 1982, Blairstown had a population of only around 4,500 people. It quickly became clear that the girl was not a local and nobody knew her. However, a witness, Anne Marie Latimer, claimed that she and her daughter saw the girl on July 13th at a local supermarket located directly across from the cemetery. Since it was not possible to reconstruct the girl's appearance, the police tried to learn something about her through her distinctive clothing. It turned out that despite the missing tags, these clothes were manufactured in the Midwest and sold in a store on Long Island, New York. Three witnesses bought such clothes in that place. However, it was not possible to determine whether it was the only store that sold them. Also, witnesses were found who believed they saw the girl working as a maid at the Harrison Hall Hotel in Ocean City, Maryland. But all this information did not help the investigation. In the end, the unidentified girl was buried in the same cemetery where she was found due to the funds collected by the residents of Blairstown in January 1983. Investigators even turned to the media, including federal agencies, for help. It was then that the girl became known as Princess Doe, a name given to her by Detective Eric Krantz. Due to the attention of major media outlets, this case became widely known throughout the country. HBO filmed an episode about this case for their documentary series entitled Missing, and at the FBI headquarters in Quantico, this case was considered as part of a training course for agents. Also, this girl became the first unidentified murder victim entered into the National Crime Information Center database. The database was created 15 years before by FBI Director Edgar Hoover to facilitate access to crime information by different law enforcement agencies. During the investigation, detectives considered various people for their involvement in the case, including serial killers, but none of them were suitable for various reasons. To identify the victim, the police searched for information about all missing girls across the country 
who fit the description. Many were ruled out due to obvious discrepancies. However, one missing person report about a young girl seriously caught the attention of the police. Diane Genis Dye In 1979, Diane Genis Dye was 13 years old. She lived in San Jose, California, with her brother Dean and mother Patricia. Going through a tough time due to her recent parents' divorce and being a teenager, Diane associated herself with an undesirable crowd, began drinking alcohol, and using light drugs. This caused constant conflicts with her mother, who prohibited her from interacting with local dubious personalities. Diane's best friend, Natya Christie, said she wanted to run away from home and had spoken to him about it repeatedly. On one such day, he tried to persuade her not to do it, but she insisted he leave her alone. The conversation took place near Diane's home, and he never saw her again. Investigators discovered that shortly after Diane disappeared, she was seen with a blonde-haired girl, but her identity couldn't be established. Two years after the teen's runaway, a former classmate claimed to have seen and even talked to Diane at the Saramonte Shopping Center in Daly City, California. Police couldn't confirm or refute these statements. However, detectives had reasons to be seriously concerned about the runaway girl's well-being. One of Diane's neighbors was Doug Arnold Young. It was precisely from such people that Patricia tried to protect her daughter. Young repeatedly broke the law, stole from his neighbors, and even stole cars. When the police were searching for Diane, Young told them two different stories about his last meeting with the girl. He claimed that he drove her alone after her escape, but then changed his statements, saying that there was another girl with Diane. Less than four years after that, Young beat a 74-year-old man to death with a hammer who refused to lend him his car for a while. Since that time, he has been serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole in the Mule Creek State Prison in California. Detectives from New Jersey took an interest in the case, believing that the runaway girl was the same Princess Doe found in the Cedar Ridge Cemetery. Although the dental records of the girls did not match, the police were so confident in their theory that they even called a press conference to announce that the mystery of the deceased had been solved. However, this conclusion was not agreed upon by the original investigator on the case, Eric Kranz, nor by Diane's relatives, nor by the California detectives. Only in 2003, due to DNA analysis, it was officially established that Diane Dye was not Princess Doe. Diane's friend, Natya Christie, has never given up on trying to learn something about the fate of his friend throughout all these years. He runs a Facebook group dedicated to Diane's disappearance. He also stays in touch with her father and brother. Her mother Patricia passed away a few years ago, never learning anything about the fate of her daughter. In 1999, a woman named Donna Kinlaw was arrested in California for attempted fraud. She used the another person's ID with name Elaine. It turned out that this girl was from Long Island, involved in prostitution, and was related to Donna's husband, Arthur Kinlaw, the pimp. Donna struck a deal with the police and told them that her husband had killed two girls, whose names remained unknown. Arthur Kinlaw was later found guilty for these murders and sentenced to death. Donna then revealed that her husband had also killed a girl in 1982, who had refused to be involved in prostitution. The woman's story constantly changed. According to one version, she was personally present at a cemetery when Arthur killed the girl. According to another version, the girl was at their house, the man left with her, and returned alone, later mentioning that he had killed her. Inconsistencies in her statements, as well as the fact that neither Donna nor Arthur could remember the name of the girl they spent time with, as well as the lack of other evidence, did not allow Kinlaw to be charged. However, in the same year, the body of the unknown girl was exhumed for DNA testing. In 2012, the police tried to learn more about the victim, and for this purpose, sent her hair and tooth for isotopic analysis. Specialists found out that the girl was most likely born in the USA. Hair analysis revealed that she had lived in the Midwest or Northwest of the country for seven to 10 months. Tooth analysis indicated that the girl could have been from Arizona. It was also assumed that she had lived for a long time on Long Island, New York. Despite all efforts to establish the identity of Princess Doe, it was not possible. However, 
In 2018, the investigators had reasons to believe that they had finally found out whom Princess Doe really was. Kathy Kelly Kathleen Kelly, who preferred to be called Kathy in 1981, was 12 years old. After her parents' divorce, she moved with her mother, sister, and brothers to a suburb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. On May 22nd, Kathy went with her family to the Chess Arena Skating Rink in Cheswick. However, after some time, she left and went to her sister Judy's house, which was less than in a mile from the rink. Judy was 25 years older than Kathy and already had her own children, and she lived halfway between the rink and Kathy's house. After playing with Judy's youngest child for a while, Judy decided to go home, which was just around one mile away. No one saw Kathy after that. When speaking with the police, Judy could not say exactly when her sister left. She wasn't even sure if it was dark outside at that time. Kathy's life was described as difficult, but none of her relatives revealed what they meant by that out of respect for her parents. Many teenage girls disappeared in the region at that time. Some were never found, and some were discovered dead. Despite this, Kathy's case did not attract media attention. However, the investigation of the murder of Princess Doe led the police to investigate Kathy's disappearance. A genealogy laboratory was hired to compare DNA samples, but the investigation did not confirm the police's suspicions. Kathleen Kelly's fate remains unknown to this day. Eight or nine years after her disappearance, someone called her sister Judy and remained silent on the phone and once said, you know who I am and I'm okay. It is unknown if this was Kathy or a malicious prankster. In 2021, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, in collaboration with Astria Forensics, announced that they had obtained the DNA material of Princess for new analysis. Several different genealogical laboratories were involved in the work on this case. As a result, the mystery of the murdered girl's identity was solved. Princess Doe turned out to be Dawn Rita Olenek, a 17-year-old girl from Bohemia, New York. This city is located on Long Island, where the victim had to live as the detectives thought earlier. The girl's identity was preliminarily established on February 22, 2022, but the police had to do some work to officially and unequivocally identify the deceased. A potential brother of Princess was found, Robert Olanik Jr. He said that his sister left home at his mother's request around June 24, 1982, and no one has seen her since. The girl was struggling with her parents' divorce, and her behavior did not please her mother. The victim's sister, Lynn Knudsen, was also found. As a result, by April 29th, law enforcement knew for sure that the deceased was Dawn Olanik. They decided to announce this officially on the 40th anniversary of her death, July 15th, 2022. Every year on this day, locals and specially arriving people visit the grave of Princess and a small museum dedicated to her in Blairstown. After the identification of Olanik, the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office announced at a press conference that 68-year-old Arthur Kinlaw had been charged with her murder. It is assumed that he killed Dawn two days before she was found. It turned out that he had confessed to this crime in 2005, but at that time, the police lacked the evidence to confirm his words. Now, he is serving his sentence in Sullivan County Jail, New York. Dawn's parents never found out what happened to their daughter. Her father, Robert Olanik Sr., died in 2017 at the age of 77, and her mother, Constance Olenek, died at the age of 50 in 1992, 10 years after her daughter's death. Interestingly, Robert's obituary states that he was involved in volunteer work, played guitar, collected humorous books, and much more during his life. However, his obituary does not mention his daughter Dawn, who at the age of 17 was kicked out of the house by her mother and died three weeks later on the cemetery.